Good morning, folks. We've got a storm watch. We're moving from the earthquake watch period to the alert and warning status. We've got eye candy and more on climate forcing, but we're starting with spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star with the northern coronal hole remaining highly mobile. The focus on the small limb activity should give way to that coronal hole incoming on the equator. The solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, but that coronal hole is going to directly connect its IMF to Earth later this week. And we've got excess atmospheric electricity signals in the West Pacific and into Asia. This is critical frequency and it does shift around the world continuously with the nighttime hours. Point is, Earth is not only way below average pressure release, earthquakes that is, and we've got every uptick timing signal on deck in the coming days. Eyes on it. Quick heads up next for España y Portugal. Remnant rains are touching the coast now, but in about 24 hours from this show, a much stronger line of systems is going to cross over and could bring everything from floods to high winds to hail and even tornadoes. Eyes open there as well. Up first in the links for today is Osiris Rex and asteroid Bennu. We've waited a long time for this. Tomorrow, the human race plays it tag with an asteroid, which is actually a horrid way to put it because of what happens if it tags us back. That is less of a real worry than what microbial life might come back with the spacecraft, but hey, got a top 2020 somehow. Let's go to some core science next, the cosmic radio dipole. It is thought to exist and was expected, but it continues to break expectations in its strength. In a not-so-subtle nod to Dr. Robitaille, the cosmic microwave background must have some key failures to so wrongly indicate the power of the radio dipole to so underestimate it. The last half dozen studies on the subject have found the same thing, and there's a problem. This makes for a number of anisotropies or isotropic failures from theory that we've seen confirmed just this year. These push us toward a dipole plasma cosmology, the namesake of one of our documentaries you can find on our website and on our channel homepage. Next up, we're finding one of the climate forcing authors cited in my textbook. His specialty is actually cosmic rays, which are modulated by solar activity, and he's found that data issues are actually confounding the discovery of even more correlations between space weather and climate. He's aiming to fix a weak link here. Up next, folks, the most complicated space weather interaction is what Dr. Brian Tinsley reported at our 2019 conference, the magnetic character of the solar wind and how it couples to the Earth systems. Here, we learn more about the differences separated by the current sheet and how they determine whether the inflow or outflow hemisphere of energy exchange takes the flow channel coupling the plasma to geoelectric dynamics. Lastly, we come to electroquakes, pre-seismic electromagnetic anomalies, and in the ULF realm, this stands on dozens of others. We were considered kind of crazy for these discussions in 2011. Now, there's even a textbook on pre-earthquake processes by the AGU. Much of it is electromagnetic, with either ULF or electron content or magnetic fields doing the deed. And we dive deeper into the connection to the sun in chapter 7 of our textbook, the earthquake alert timing and the location forecasting with electromagnetic signals are both discovered in chapter 7. The cosmic ray climate forcing is mostly in chapter 5. We greatly appreciate your support. Remember the PDF version of the textbook is only available until the 21st and only at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.